Okay, so while I've showed you all the video games I've ever created from a previous video on this channel, check it out if you already haven't, there are many other ways you can create video games. Project Spark, Dreams, Little Big Planet, Mario Maker, Mario Maker 2, Mario Maker 3, Mario Maker... F My point is, some games just let you make your own games. Back around 2014 and 2015, I used to watch a lot of Dan TDM, who now keeps getting promotions from Sega. Minecraft was great because it was a game that you could never run out of content for. Not only could people play the game forever without the game ending, but you could download other people's worlds and showcase your creations. There was also a constantly expanding library of mods for you to try out. And on top of that, you had adventure maps, basically a game within a game. Minecraft's coding capabilities have really evolved over time. Originally, you could only use command blocks to do anything crazy and complex, but now you can summon bigger command block machines by copying some code and pasting it into a single command block. And you can write text and stick it on the screen, and now you can even change how the game functions by adding data packs to world files. Like, I can't keep up with all this anymore, I'm still making piston doors. But you can completely change how Minecraft works with this code, and add in new enemies and create unique items without using mods or command blocks. And that's led to many ambitious projects over the many years I played Minecraft, and the many years I stopped playing before I came back to continue making piston doors. Of course, younger me tried to also make my own epic Minecraft adventure maps with my basic redstone and command block knowledge. The first map we have is the Pokemon Explorer adventure map. We begin our humble adventure in our lovely Kanto house. If we check the TV, it tells us that most of the PCs in the Pokemon centers have been replaced, but who cares about that? We're on our very first Pokemon adventure! But before we start, we have to check out the rules. Rule 1. Don't break blocks, but you may kill Pokemon in desperate times for food. What? I don't, I don't want to kill Pokemon. I'm only willing to beat them up so much that they pass out. Rule number 2. You're unlikely to kill Pokemon since you have lots of carrots. Well, thank god. So I guess the next thing we should do is check out the story. Just yesterday, Professor Oak asked you to come to his lab, but you don't know why. Now you are excited to get ready to set off. Your journey begins. Wow, what an exciting story. Okay, so we've arrived outside Oak's lab, and I have a feeling he wants to turn me into a K-pop star. The first thing you always do in Minecraft Adventure Maps or any game is to check out any chests. You never know what useful thing will be in there. In our case, we have EXP, a Pokey Sword, Mr. Transportation, money, and some books. Professor Oak's notes say that we are taking the explore ex exploring challenge and I have to get all explorer badges, not gym badges. Unfortunately, Pokemon attack me at night, so I need some form of protection. Fortunately for us, Oak has three starter Pokemon ready. Firstly, Wolf. They loyal. Cap protects me from electrodes, and I can ride horse. I have no idea why I didn't name the Pokemon their Pokemon name, since I'm using a resource pack that makes the wolf look like Arcanine. I chose the wolf though, since it's basically perfect for a Pokemon journey, since it attacks other entities, unlike the cat, but doesn't allow you to skip segments of the world, unlike the horse. I tried to tame the wolf with a steak though, so when it ate the steak, I thought I tamed it, and, and then I threw a Pokeball at it. He didn't take that very well. Anyways, let's head off to Route 1. There are a lot of war turtles here. So let's have a good old fashioned Pokemon battle. Wolf use bite! Impeel the living flesh from your enemies. Once we get to the first town, we can head to the gym to collect the first explorer badge. Remember, we don't need to get a gym badge because we're exploring and not battling. Battling is for self protection only. I then went through this forest in the middle of the night while it was raining, and it's kind of cool. The rain only falls through those little gaps between the tree leaves, and I don't know why, but it looks kind of nice. So you might be thinking, wow, this is a pretty decently built map. And yes it is, because I didn't build it. I just took someone else's Kanto map, modified it a bit, and stole a resource pack on top of it. That's all I can really show you since the regular environment terrain generated in some places and destroyed a significant chunk of the Kanto map. I wanted to at least show you the Pokemon League, but that also doesn't work, so let's move on to the next map. Star Wars The Last Padawan. I have a trailer for this map, let me just play it. Ah. 
Great. I think this was my first proper map and it was pretty bad. Wait, what's with all the nulls? Why are the chests empty? Okay, so I had to look at when the maps were last opened and figure out which version of Minecraft was the most recent at that time, because using the wrong version likes to bug the map out. We have beds for checkpoints since I was completely unaware of the spawn point command at the time, and you can see that the game is permanently stuck to night time. I probably did this by having a minecart move back and forth over a command block that changes the time to night. This was done for two reasons, to keep the mobs from burning in open areas, and to allow you to sleep in beds whenever. Anyways, we start in this little ship that lands when you press the button. This was meant to be Kimono as written on the signs. If you aren't very familiar with Star Wars, Kimono is where all the clone troopers are born and then grown and trained and raised and you know, all that parent stuff. It's meant to be a raining planet, but for some reason it's snowing. What could this mean? Let's keep playing to find out. Also, here's a pumpkin that gives you a clone helmet HUD. I've also hidden two secret items that will unlock a special ending for the map. Originally, they were gonna expand the game even more, but I got lazy. Shoot. I forgot to check if the game was in peaceful. So we walk out the building and the bridge explodes while Darth Vader and his stormtroopers ambush us. Well, the stormtroopers ambush us while Vader makes an escape knowing I'm too powerful to face off. Smart move, buddy. Next we hop onto a ship that says do not steal, which shows how truly rebellious we are, and head off into hyperspace. This next planet is supposed to be Utapau. Utapau? Utapau? Utapau. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the planet where Obi-Wan jumps down and he's like, hello there, and General Grievous is like, General Kenobi. And Obi-Wan shoots General Grievous and he's like, so uncivilized. Now what does this button do? The door is broken. Hey, no, no. You even get the blaster Obi-Wan shot Grievous with. I don't know why I did this next, but I have this minecart and it just says to shoot it, which somehow teleports you into an elevator. I guess I just wanted a cool gimmick going on, but it was pretty dumb. Anyways, you try going down the elevator, but it breaks and you fall into a mine full of <laughs> Anakin slaves who are all trapped down there. Wow, 13 year old me is amazing. For some reason, the exit you find teleports you all the way to Coruscant and into Palpatine's office. From there, you have to make it to Palpatine's private toilet and flush yourself down the toilet to get into his secret base. Man, I should have been writing the prequels. From here, you can steal some of Palpatine's credits to buy a wolf, but you could literally just throw anything down there to get it, or you could take the wolf directly from the dispenser. You can also fall into the hole and get stuck. We then proceed to a place called Hell, which looks like a place that Vader banished a bunch of people to. The last secret is there. Next we take a trip to the BDSM room where we find Rex from the Clone Wars telling me to read his book in his prison cell before an Imperial guard kills him. Ugh, now Star Wars Rebels ruined the possibility of my story being canon. But Vader puts us in a cell, we read the book, and hey look, a reason why it's snowing on Kamino. For some reason I put this invisibility potion testing room called Project Invisimals and made you blow up a wall with a creeper. We continue through the hall, fight some Imperial officers, turn off the shield generators and Project Snow and board a gunship from out of nowhere to escape. Here I tried to create an Imperial Star Destroyer on a landing pad, but as you can see, it didn't turn out so great. The goal here was to destroy it with a TNT cannon, but there's a line of TNT underneath the cannon leading to the target, so you'll end up destroying it even if you miss. Since I got all the secrets, I can unlock the secret ending. My dog teleported into the pressure plate. So as you can see, the secret ending is just you boarding a rocket ship 
and saying that you escaped to Earth, explaining why the last Padawan doesn't appear in the original trilogy. Okay, so let's move on from Star Wars. I love the Lego Movie. What a creative and visually impressive film. I made it into a Minecraft map. Unlike the previous map where I tell the story through chat messages, the story is told through poorly written books. This game was visually inspired by the 3DS LEGO Movie video game, which has an isometric view and generally flat and blocky worlds. You can't jump in the game, so I made my map flat with no places to jump over. There are, of course, occasional slopes and objects you can climb up, but I tried to make it as flat as Holo. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock different tools that represent different characters, for example, a pickaxe representing Emmett's drill, black leather armor representing Batman, and a fishing rod representing Metalbeard. Since this Minecraft map was about LEGO, I had to include the Minecraft crafting system to be like a way to build with LEGO. There were two ways to build. Find a build pad which gave you the required materials and recipes, or you could find a lone crafting table which asked you to find the materials throughout the world, but you would have to figure out what to craft based on your situation. This map also introduced my use of mob spawners. Since dispensers can only dispense so many enemies, mob spawners will just keep on spawning enemies, so you'll be constantly on your feet as you play. You can also see that I tried to put like this robot skin on top of skeletons and zombies. And with the zombies specifically, you can see that the skin is actually upside down. The face is actually on the on the legs, and the legs are on its face. And that's because I took a player skin and just renamed it to be a zombie skin. And I guess that's just not how it works, so yeah. I guess I thought it'd work because zombies have the same model as a player, or else it looks like they have the same model, I'm not sure. But that's all I have to show you for today. But fear not, we have just scratched the surface of my Minecraft worlds. I have a few other maps that I want to show you, and I'll be showcasing those in a part 2 and 3 video. But not only that, but I'm going to show you my creative mode worlds from Pocket Edition and Java. So stay tuned for that. But if you did like this video, give this video a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you want to talk to me directly, you can check out my Twitter or my Discord. And like at the end of every video, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.